Welcome to a video tutorial that will introduce um, basically biochemistry, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and bioenergetics. Let's get started. So um, as from an energetic point of view, it's all about metabolism. So metabolism is a, a very broad global term, it representing all biochemical reactions and really in relationship to energy. Um, production and storage. And so metabolism can be broken down into two major processes. Anabolism, which is synthetic and we'll see reductive, and this requires energy. And then catabolism is degradative, and so we start, we're starting to be aware of oxidation as a degradative process, and, but this is how we produce energy. So over, if we look at metabolism overall, here's our food. So the clarity is not the best, but our food is carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And so those are all large molecules. And so through catabolism, we break them down. And the good part is we get energy out that we can use to um, fuel our, our being alive. And that leads us to the small molecules. And then through anabolic processes, we need to bring energy in, and then we can produce um, the large molecules that we need for our health. Oops, there we go. Okay, so um, when you think about catabolism, right, think about breakdown. And when you think about anabolism, think about building. And the way I keep them straight is I think about professional sports, and we hear about um, some athletes using anabolic steroids to build their muscle mass. Alrighty. And so then our goal is going to be to, um, in these next few chapters, is we're going to look at catabolism mostly. How do we break down our food and get energy from it? And so when we look here, Right? We recognize proteins, carbohydrates, and fats as our food. And then this first stage of catabolism is going to be hydrolysis. We will use water and various enzymes to break down our food into these small molecules. And then we will break them down even further and so in the second stage of catabolism, we can think of this as um, acetyl-CoA production. Notice that all roads, all roads lead to acetyl-CoA because then it feeds into the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, which is then really where we get the energy production. So, um, in the next few chapters, we're going to look at proteins and their building block, amino acids, the makeup of carbohydrates and fats, and then we'll look energetically at how this all works. So, on the next page, we'll just have a brief introduction to each of these important biomolecules. And we'll start with proteins, um, looking at their structure and function. And you can see that there are such a diverse range of functions that um, proteins play within our body. Um, we can start to break them down, and in the chapters on proteins, we'll look more closely at this. We can see that, um, that proteins come in, in several kind of themes. So here if we look at structure and contraction, that's where we're going to focus on the, the, um, the fibrous proteins. And then um, the globular proteins, those will have to do with more with enzymes, immunity, and transport. And so we will see globular proteins right up here with immunity. And you, anytime you see glob, globin, you know, right, there's our enzymes. And then even under transport. And so when we look at the third um, the third type of, of protein that's focusing on transport are the membrane proteins. And so here is our, our lipid bilayer, which is the cell membrane. 
And then we have these membrane proteins that you can see are involved in getting substances through our, um, through our cell membranes. So the, they have um, very different presences within the body. The fibrous look like the fibers of a rope. The globules will look at how this formation comes through intermolecular forces. They'll look like little balls. And then a, a subset of the globular proteins would be these membrane proteins that um, help transport substances in and out of our cells. Um, so then the other important thing to note is what they all have in common. While they have different structures and functions, all of these proteins are made from long chains of amino acids, bonded together and then folded into a variety of shapes. So um, as we move on through the tutorial series, we'll look more closely and in detail at proteins and amino acids. And then when we get to the carbohydrate chapter, we'll be looking at the structure and function of carbohydrates. And one of the first important things to note is here's our buddy D-glucose, and it's shown as an open chain. Glucose is a big deal because it's our, our primary energy source. However, one of the first things we'll learn in this chapter is that it, um, it interconverts back and forth with the closed ring. And so um, you can think of glucose as our energy source, and you want to start recognizing either one of these forms as D-glucose, whether you see it in the open chain or the ring. And then we've kind of crossed the thresholds here, um, storage and structural support. Then that leads to more complicated carbohydrates. So here we have starch and glycogen. When you think about starch, think plants. And glycogen, think animals. And what these two share is they both connect sugars through alpha linkages. And so in our carbohydrate chapter, we'll learn more about that. And that's very different from cellulose. So when we think about um, starch and glycogen, we're thinking more about energy storage. And when we look at cellulose, we will learn that there we have beta linkages. And then this is more about structural support. And so we could note that the, the very uniform linear arrangement here of the beta linkages that allows for close packing, which would um, you know, benefit in structural support applications. And then we we'll notice here in our alpha linkages, notice all the branching. So we have another example of um, where the chemical, the chemical bonding leads to different um, physical properties. And so we'll dig into all these details as we get into the carbohydrate chapter. Um, and then the thir a very third and very important function for carbohydrates is um, that they act as receptors on cell membranes. So once again here we see our um, cell membrane. And now we can recognize here that there's a, a membrane protein. And then um, connected, so not only do we, we learned about all the functional groups of organic molecules, and now we'll start to look at them in the presence of the biological molecules, but now we see an example where we have a carbohydrate linked to a protein. So we can see it gets very complicated. And this carbohydrate acts as the receptor. And so now if I bring your attention back to the top of the page, Notice this closed ring form. Um, in many biological schematics, what we'll do is we will see here that this, just this little six-membered ring starts to equal uh, a sugar molecule, a monosaccharide. So that's a very common representation. 
that leaves out some detail but works symbolically. Okay, and now the, um, the third and final major class of biomolecules is the lipids. So let's look briefly at lipids. In some ways I think they're the most complicated to understand because there's a very diverse group of molecules that we can all describe as lipids. And the reason for that is because what makes something a lipid is that it's not water soluble, right? It's hydrophobic. And so um, there, um, this leads to a very broad group of molecules that are all hydrophobic. So they get classified based on their structure and function. Okay, so here we could see that waxes are one type of, of um, lipid, and you can see there's an ester, so esters are dominant here. I like to think of waxes as fatty esters because of those two R groups. Those two R groups are very long, so if we wanted to look at a wax, we would draw an ester, and we would put very long R groups. And that's what creates the water barrier capacity. It's very long. And these are very long as well. Okay. And then um, the next type of um, lipid that we'll look at um, that calls into using, looking at the glycerol backbone, which we will see is right here. And um, we can have triacylglycerols. And so what in the world are those? Those are simply fats and oils. And then we'll see that we can get some phospholipids um, also with this glycerin backbone. And if you're wondering what's the difference between a fat and an oil, right? So fats come from animals. And oils come from plants. And triglycerides, they, um, they serve as our long-term energy shortage, an another complement to um, glycogen within animals and starch within plants. And the R groups are the big deal, right? These are long, they're long R groups, and their structure is going to determine the physical consistency of the fat or the oil, right? So they determine whether a fat or an oil is a solid or a liquid. They're not going to be gases. So we can ignore that. Right, I think I'll rewrite that. It's right, solid or liquid. So depending on the R group, whether it's saturated or unsaturated, leads to the physical property of the fat or the oil. And then a ver another very important group of lipids will lump all together here. These are the um, the phospholipids and the sphingolipids, and what they all share in common is they have a polar head, and then they have lo two long nonpolar tails. And so in those previous diagrams where we were showing cell membranes, right, they create a lipid bilayer. And so we'll look more closely at that as we explore our chapter on lipids. And then um, to finish up this group, we would have the steroids. And so the steroids, cholesterol and its derivatives, very important compounds, bile acids, vitamin D, sex hormones. The main thing here is this is our signature, these four fused rings. You could think of that as the signature. If you see a compound that has these four fused rings, you know that it's a steroid. Um, and so you just want to be aware of that pattern. And so it's probably worth drawing it at least once to start to internalize it, right? So we have two six-membered rings side by side. And then we have one lifted up. And then there's our five-membered ring. Not the, not the most beautiful steroid, but it gets you there, right? So we'll always have that core hydrocarbon backbone. And then the last group of um, lipids 
are the eicosanoids, and these are related, these are compounds that trigger inflammation, and so um, they're also, um, yeah, let's just leave it at that. So they trigger um, inflammation. And so um, two very common um, subgroups of eicosanoids are the prostaglandins and the leukotrienes. And what we will learn about these is that they're all derived from arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid can be used to synthesize either one, and it's a 20-carbon fatty acid. Okay, so, um, so that concludes our introduction to biochemistry and these important biological molecules and a little bit on the energetics that we'll be investigating. Um, I hope you find this tutorial useful, and I think it lays an important foundation for future tutorials.